pandemic was so uh, such a global event, and as it unfolded, there were real challenges in getting the data to the people who needed it. Uh, it wasn't clear that we had everything we needed. Um, so we had to do a lot of uh, a lot of backfilling. We had to set up data sharing uh, arrangements. We had to put in place emergency notices to allow data to be made available. Some of that went very well. I mean, the way in which academia, public and private, third party, uh, um, um, and um, uh, uh, non-government aid agen agencies shared their data was really impressive. But that was uh, that was a lot of frantic activity. And we might ask why we hadn't pre-positioned some of this, these arrangements earlier on. And in some cases, the data just wasn't there. As you said, things like all the data on care homes, you know, that became so essential, or the data on um, contact uh, between average types of people in certain parts of the country. Not the detailed level, but what would we expect a number of contacts for an average person to be in a particular part of the country in a particular role or profession? We had very little of that kind of core data infrastructure. Now, we'll the data which the government gets, then it uses to, to, to decide, ask the, they will ask people to do things. And, it, and really, I think something that took off hugely was the communication using, using data. You know, governments always wouldn't be on the, uh, there without a graph, telling people to flatten the, the idea of flattening the curve. Uh, so we're all talking about curves. Uh, so, so I imagine the data literacy of the, of the world population has gone up a chunk. Uh, and it's sort of uh, the cur the what's going to happen to the curve uh, is the discussed in pubs and uh, and all over the place. Uh, and and so to a certain extent, the idea that yeah, what, what our lives are determined by and and we contribute to this curve is uh, is a thing which very clear from COVID. It's been actually clear about climate, of course, climate data as well. So we do need to flatten some curves around climate. Yeah, I mean, that's the amazing thing is we're not, we're not, we just have been living through an existential crisis, you know, a global pandemic. We're in the midst of another one unfolding with uh, the global uh, climate challenge. And, uh, and data will be an essential part of all of this. The infrastructure, the institutions we might need, the trust we have in it, as you say, and our, our literacy, our basic ability to interrogate and understand this. Because there was a phrase that was used, led by the data. And actually, that's quite a bad phrase in some respects. It's much more that we need to review it, understand it, critique it. And that's been a really interesting conversation. It's really important, I think, not to regard the scientists uh, and the, the medical research, the people in white coats who tell you the truth. They, they understand that their whole, they're trying their very best to give the best information under conditions of considerable uncertainty very often. And I think we've got to become more nuanced in our sense that the data can be good, but it's never perfect, never gives us a complete picture. And so being critically reflective and understanding that all science, all our responses are kind of in some sense standing on the edge of error. That's what science is. You know, it, it can believe it's wrong and can revise what we believe about how these things unfold on the one hand, but then not just throwing everything out and saying, oh, we don't trust any of this stuff. The truth of it is a lot of, when you look at what, when, when people end up with strange ideas, uh, uh, then uh, they've got, they've often found them on social media. So one of the interesting things has been to, when people have actually done reverse engineering and looked at, uh, and looked at something bad that's happened, and then and, and said, yeah, so the, the, the uh, uh, like a, this genocide memo was actually, we c you can actually see the WhatsApp groups which led to it. So if you can, and so you can, so that uh, to a certain extent, there were these mechanisms which happened in social media, and one of the, so one of the interesting questions there is it isn't about uh, sort of a um, bigger question than just jumping on bad data is uh, is actually can we design systems that people use online? Can we design the social media so that naturally people tend to use them to uh, so that it, people tend to to uh, promote the things which are more, which actually are con connect with science, connect with the tr truth, rather than going f for the, uh, rather than going for the, the weird uh, uh, outlandish stories. And there's, I, I think there's, a, there's a, um, a lot of truth to the fact that the social media systems, we, no, they're programs that we've designed ourselves. Somebody programmed them. Uh, actually, we could, they should, they could program them to, prevent that sort of thing happening so much.
And I think we have to understand that there are there's scope for the same data will bear multiple interpretations. Sometimes there is genuine uncertainty around it. Sometimes you don't have the complete data asset that you'd like. So, uh, and again, to imagine that there is one ground truth, uh, we we need to, in a sense, become as we become more appreciative of what the data science is really all about, we understand its strengths and weaknesses. The question you refer to around trust, I mean, in the hands of scientists or medical professionals, is it regarded in one way as opposed to, 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 to politicians? I mean, that, or government, I mean, that's quite well understood. Interestingly, we know the public probably trust the NHS in a certain sense as a portal for this data, uh, rather more than it might out of the uh, mouths of various kind of members of the political establishment. But again, uh, that, that, that understanding how you build trust and how you widen the discourse. So rather than just immediately shutting off, allowing larger publics to come together and debate these things and understand what the strengths are. We do know there's misinformation, Tim talked about it. We know it's sometimes systematically planted, and echoed and amplified. Um, but again, uh, it's interesting to see how that debate's going around the online harms bill, which is working through government uh, uh, parliament at the moment to kind of work out what is the best way to regulate and manage that.